contributions have been used wisely for the development of the country and welfare of its people. I appreciate the taxpayers for their continued support. The government has reduced and rationalized tax rates. Under the new tax scheme, there is now no tax liability for taxpayers with income up to 7 lakh rupees, up from 2.2 lakh rupees in the financial year 2013-14. The threshold for presumptive taxation for retail businesses was increased from 2 crores to 3 crores. Similarly, the threshold for professionals eligible for presumptive taxation was increased from 50 lakh rupees to 75 lakh rupees. Also, corporate tax rate was decreased from 30% to 22% for existing domestic companies and to 15% for certain new manufacturing companies. Honorable Speaker, sir, in the last five years, our focus has been to improve taxpayer services. The age-old jurisdiction-based assessment system was transformed with the introduction of faceless assessment and appeal, thereby imparting greater efficiency, transparency and accountability. Introduction of updated income tax returns, a new Form 26 AS and pre-filling of tax returns have made filing of tax returns simpler and easier. Average processing time of returns has been reduced from 93 days in the year 2013-14 to a mere 10 days this year, thereby making refunds faster. Indirect taxation. By unifying the highly fragmented indirect tax regime in India, the GST has reduced the compliance burden on trade and industry. The industry has acknowledged the benefits of GST. According to a recent survey conducted by a leading consulting firm, 94% of industry leaders view the transition to GST as largely positive. According to 80% of the respondents, it has led to supply chain optimization as elimination of tax arbitrage and octroi has resulted in disbanding of check posts at the state and city boundaries. At the same time, tax base of GST more than doubled and the average monthly gross GST collection has almost doubled to 1.66 lakh crores this year. States too have benefited. States' SGST revenue, including compensation released to states in the post-GST period of 2017-18 to 2022-23, has achieved a buoyancy of 1.22. In contrast, the tax buoyancy of state revenues from subsumed taxes in the pre-GST four-year period of 2012-13 to 2015-16 was a mere 0.72. The biggest beneficiaries are consumer, consumers as reduction in logistic cost and taxes have brought down prices of most goods and services. We have taken a number of steps in customs to facilitate international trade. As a result, the import release time declined by 47% to 71 hours at inland container depots, by 28% to 44 hours at air cargo complexes, and by 27% to 85 hours at seaports over the last four years since 2019, when the national time release studies were first tacked. Tax proposals. As for tax proposals, in keeping with the Convention, I do not propose to make any changes relating to taxation and propose to retain the same tax rates for direct and indirect taxes, including import duties.
However, certain tax benefits to startups and investments made by sovereign wealth or pension funds, as also tax exemption on certain income of some IFSC units, are expiring on 31 3 2024. To provide continuity in taxation, I propose to extend the date to 31 3 2025. Moreover, in line with our government's vision to improve ease of living and ease of doing business, I wish to make an announcement to improve taxpayers' services. There are a large number of petty, non-verified, non-reconciled or disputed tax, direct tax demands, disputed direct tax demands, many of them dating as far back as 1962, which continue to remain on the books, causing anxiety to honest taxpayers and hindering refunds of subsequent years. Honorable Speaker, sir, I propose to withdraw such outstanding direct tax demands up to 25,000 rupees pertaining to the period up to financial year 2009-10 and up to 10,000 rupees for financial years 2010-11 to 2014-15. This is expected to benefit about a crore taxpayers. One crore taxpayers would benefit out of this. Economy then and now. In 2014, when our government assumed the reins, the responsibility to mend the economy step by step and to put the governance systems in order was enormous. The need, for the, need of the hour was to give hope to the people, to attract investments and to build support for the much needed reforms. The government did that successfully following a strong belief of nation first. The crisis of those years has been overcome and the economy has been put firmly on a high sustainable growth path with all-round development. It is now appropriate to look at where we were then. I repeat, it is now appropriate to look at where we were then till 2014 and where we are now only for the purpose of drawing lessons from the mismanagement of those years. The government will lay a white paper on table of the House. The exemplary track